Let's do our warm-ups. So yeah, gentle. Feet hip width apart, toes straight ahead, knees going towards your second toes. Ankles, knees, hips, and shoulders lined up. Activate that core, get your spine supported, shoulders relaxing down. Take a moment and focus inward, getting that breath, clean in energy and awareness. Exhale any stress or tension, and just keep that inner focus. Inhale your arms to shoulder level, stretch out to keep your shoulders down. Exhale, hands to your heart, elbows back. Inhale out to the front, get those shoulders working a little bit. And then exhale the hands behind you, fingertips together, and press into the floor. Lift your heart, stretch your spine, and then pivot at your hips. Exhale over, tuck in your chin a little bit, move your neck around. Bring your hands toward your head, get those shoulders working a little more. Spread your toes, bend your knees, lift your ribs, drop the sitting bones, and just line from the bottom of the spine back into the upper body for your back bend. Stretch out through the top of your head, feel that spine lengthen. And on an inhalation, come upright, release your arms. Take a moment feeling that energy circulate a little bit more. And again, arms are reaching out. Hands to your chest, stretch to the front, keep the shoulders down. And then clasp the hands the opposite way behind you. So it shifts one position with the fingers over. Stretch up through the heart, back through the head, and then again, exhale over into that forward position as deeply as you breath. Like. Lift your sitting bones, get a stretch on the back of your legs. Take a moment to breathe, hands toward your head. And then again, slowly you slightly bend, wind your spine all the way back up. And again, heart high into the back bend as you stretch your head out. So remember, don't lift your chin too much. Keep stretching through the back of your neck. Inhale upright. Release your arms. And again, just take a moment feeling your body's response. Side stretch next. So let's keep one arm down and the other one out. Arm toward the ceiling, hand it over your shoulder. Push the hands away, feel that stretch start. Don't twist, just lean straight to the thigh. Get those ribs opening. Lateral spine motion. Push the foot you're leaning away from down. Make sure you're not leaning forward. Feel those ribs expand a little bit more, pushing the foot down. Inhale back up, release that arm. Feel that side, it's now different. So yeah, other side, balance it out. Palm toward the ceiling, hand above your shoulder and push the hands away. Exhale, lean over and push the foot, get your leaning away from the bed. Get those ribs stretching apart as you look maybe a little bit up, but not down. And stretch the side of the foot. And again, inhale to the top and release. Shoulders back and down and arms again at shoulder level. Palms toward the ceiling, hands above your shoulders. Clasp your elbows and pull the arms back by your ears. Spread your toes. Stretch your bones apart in your spine. So sitting bones at the base of the skull, stretch away from each other. Exhale, turn to your twist. Pull the brain. Take another breath. Exhale on over. Just deepen as much as you'd like with those arms right by your ears. Lift the sitting bones. A breath or two. And then on an inhalation, work your way up. Stay in the twist and come into the upper body for a little twist back bend. Remember, gentle on the low back and when you're in the twist. Elbows back, chest high, shoulders down. Take a breath. And again, on an inhalation, come on up. Exhale around to the center and switch your arms around. And again, bring your arms next to your ears and stretch everything apart. Exhale and twist to the other side. Another breath, and pivot over as you exhale. And again, deepen as much on this side as you'd like. Keep the weight on both feet as evenly as you can, and see if it feels different on each side. 
on an inhalation, work your way up in the twist, and again, come into that upper body back bend, not too much on that lower back. Take a breath, just relax the shoulders down and the elbows back. And then inhale upright, exhale around to the front. And again, shoulders down as you extend into fully extended mountain pose. Spread your toes, sink evenly into the dolls of your feet and heels. And then palms out at shoulder level, pivot forward, chest and heart leaning. Stretch it out, everything straight. Drop in a rag doll, just hanging. And then hands behind your legs, just pull it even deeper for a good back stretch. Release your hands to the front, tuck in your chin just slightly, and again, wind your way slowly from the bottom of the spine all the way up. Circle those shoulders back and down a couple of times as you get back into mountain pose. Just feel your body, notice how that spine is activated. And let's step one. So toes to the front, and we'll do a triangle. So the distance from your, for your inner from your ankle bone all the way up to your joint, that's the same distance between both feet, more or less. Closer if you want it easier, of course. Keep the hips facing forward and the shoulders facing forward and bring your arms up to shoulder level. Palms toward the floor, shoulders down. And then turn one foot all the way to the side, but keep your hips and shoulders facing the front. Heel back, toes forward on that back leg. Remember, be going toward the toes, not in the wrong direction. And then in, indentation at the top of the thigh, that's where you're pivoting from, pushing away at that. The further you push, the more your hand will go toward the floor. As we pivot, the arms right across from each other, one down and the other one. Head to the side, body facing as much toward the front as you can. Shoulder blades towards your waist, toes spreading out. Get weight into both feet as evenly as you can, so especially into that back foot. And then bend your arm and bring it down toward your lower hip. Pull a little bit back with that chest and shoulder, opening a little bit more. A little bit more of a twist through the whole spine. So hips, ribs, shoulder, and face, face forward. And then release that hand back right above you. Lead with that hand, pivoting back up. Keep the shoulder legs out towards your waist, palms toward the floor, feet turning to the center, and release from your starting position. Take a moment, just feel your body a little bit more energized. And we're going to, of course, balance and go the opposite direction. So arms at shoulder level. Turn one foot all the way to the side. And then heel back, toes forward. But remember, don't pull that hip around. Keep it back so that everything faces the direction you started. Hip joint right at the top of your thigh. Push out, keep both legs straight as you're in your triangle. Palms to the front, and again, everything facing the front as you can. You can go here, you can go further. It just depends on where your body wants to go. It's all a triangle. So do what's right for your body. Keep the hip pulling back, the chest facing the front. And remember, no pressure in your hands. Bend that elbow up above. Pull it down towards your lower hip. And again, rotate maybe a little further up toward the ceiling or toward the front. Keep stretching the neck long. Keep the whole body turning in synchronicity. And don't forget to breathe. And then release the hand right above the other arm. And again, lead with it, pivoting back up. Palms toward the floor, feet to the front. Find that star position. Energize out from your heart in all five directions. And release the arms, stepping into mountain pose. Take a moment as you get back and just notice how that spine is activated even more. Hips maybe a little bit more open too. Hands to your heart. Inhale, follow the hands toward the ceiling. 
keep looking at your thumbs and pull them behind you, giving that chest a little rise for a nice upper body back thing. Exhale, follow your hands down to your heart. Come it on over at your hips, down into ragdoll. Slide your hands up under your knees on your shins. Stretch and straighten everything, elbows, knees, and spine. And exhale, bending your knees. Come on all the way to the mat into our child pose transition. Hips next to your heels and hands next to your feet. Bring your forehead down toward the floor. Get a good stretch on the back of your body. And then when you're ready, inhale up, slide off. Bring your legs out in front into staff position. So feet about hip width apart, pressing out through the heels, pulling back with the toes, getting that back of the leg, sinking down toward the floor as much as it wants to go. And then kneecaps toward your thighs, tightening the front of your thighs so that hamstring on the back of your legs gets a good stretch. Sitting bones slightly behind you, remember, so that you've got that nice posture with the core supporting your spine. Let's warm up our hips a little bit. So bring your foot to your opposite thigh and let the knee come down toward the floor. See how tight you are or not, and just notice it. Let the knee come down, no need to push it or anything, just let gravity do the work. If it's feeling tight, remember you can bring the leg over to the side, keep the knee and toes up if you do. Or you can put a pad under those sitting bones, a little bit of pelvic tilt if that is something you would find more useful. Knee coming down, you can add the weight of your hand, but remember no pressure because when you push, it resists, and then it doesn't give the muscles an opportunity to give us nice of a stretch through that hip and leg. And then bringing your foot into your hand and your knee into your other hand or pulling your arms around and pulling the leg in as move that rotator back and forth, side to side, getting that outside of the hip working a little bit more fully. If you love it, you can make that leg closer or higher and that makes that hip joint work a little harder, but don't do that if it doesn't feel right for you. And then release that leg and do your yoga, notice the difference. So yeah, we need to balance the body during the other side. So again, sitting bones behind you as you pull that opposite foot up to your thigh and let the knee come down. Notice one side may be tighter than the other, but don't push, it's okay. Just let it do its own thing so that gravity is doing the work because we want yoga to be effortless. So take a moment and breathe. Again, bring that leg over to the side if that's going to help on this side a little bit more or keep it there or do your padding, whatever is necessary. Hands on your leg, but not pressure if you want a little bit of extra weight to help that leg get encouraged to move with gravity, but don't force it ever. Take a breath, feel that core still supporting your spine. Don't forget that. The crown, of course, reaching to the ceiling, no rounding, no shoulders either. And then again, bringing the foot and knee into your hands by pulling the leg in even a little closer. See if you feel that outer hip on this one as much or differently from the other side. Just noticing what your body is telling you. If it's loving it, higher or closer. And if it's not, don't go there. Take a few breaths, just relax your shoulders, keep that core supporting your spine. And then releasing that foot, just bring the legs out. And again, sitting bones still behind you just slightly, so you've got that good pivot right at the top of the thigh at that hip joint. Take a moment and breathe. And let's go into a cross leg position. So just whatever is good for you. And remember, creatures of habit, yeah, we do that the same way each time. So switch it around so the other leg is in front or on top. Just whatever's a comfortable cost for you. Shoulders back and down. We'll bring the chin into that indentation at the base of your throat. So let the back of your neck get a good stretch. Remember, the core is active, supporting your spine. The shoulders are back right above your hips. 
And that shin is just coming in as much toward the little indentation jugular notch as it wants to. Feel the back of your neck getting a little bit more stretch. And then one hand at a time, bring them to the back of your head. But remember, no pressure, just weight, because gravity will do the work when your body's ready to give a stretch there. So shoulder, shoulder blades toward your waist for activated with the ribs toward your spine and up toward your heart. Feel that spine lengthening, especially through the neck. And then as you exhale, bring your hands back down. Tip your chin up, switch your legs around. And again, get that core active spine lengthening up and lift your chin. Keep both shoulders down and just bring the chin up toward the ceiling as much as it wants. But remember, see if you're still stretching through that back of the head, base of the skull area. You want that neck here to keep stretching out. Move your jaw around. Make a face. Feel that stretch on your throat. Supposedly, the more you stretch this area, the less you're likely you're having a double chin. But who knows? Bodies are different. And then tip your head back upright. Relax your shoulders. Oh, let's keep switching our legs around to giving that whole hip and lower body area working. And we're going to keep the shoulders both right above your hips and dropping toward the floor. Tip your ear over toward one shoulder, but keep both shoulders in. So as the head comes toward the side, facing still toward the front, you'll feel that side of your neck and shoulder get a little bit more stretch. Go as far as it wants, and then just relax. The side you're tipping toward, bring the hand up to the outside of your head. And again, just add a little weight, not pressure, letting that stretch get a little bit more intense if it wants to, but don't force it. And if you like that and want a little bit more, you can bring your palm down toward the floor or your fingertips if that works better. Take a moment and breathe. Make sure both shoulders stay relaxed. Just let the head and ear come over toward the side as far as they want. Don't force it. Take a breath. Just relax. And then release your hands and tip your head back upright. A little bit of difference on the two sides. So yeah, let's switch the legs around once more. Sitting bones behind you, core active, spine stretching up, shoulders down, and tip your ear on the other side over toward that shoulder. Remember, both shoulders are staying down, no punching up, no leaning to one side, just the neck is stretching. Again, the side you're tipping toward, you can bring that hand up to the outside of your head, but don't push, just add weight. Feel that stretch maybe get a little bit more, let it happen, don't force it. And if you love it, you can bring the other hand down to the floor if you like, or the fingertips down. Whatever works for your body. Some people have longer arms than others. So just do what's right for you. Take a breath. Just let that stretch happen only as much as your body wants to go. And again, when you're ready, release both hands. And tip your hand down, not right. Stretch the spine apart. And switch your legs one more time into that opposite course. And then look at your legs, a little mental yoga. See which one seems to be in front or on top. And take your hand to that knee. Opposite hand to the knee. The other arm straight out. Stretch up through your whole spine. And as you exhale, follow your hand into a twist. So turning your whole body, bring that hand close to you on the floor and stretch from your sitting bones all the way up. And then as you exhale, let that back hip that you're turning away from lift a little bit as you turn hips, ribs, and shoulder maybe deeper into your twist. So you can have the hand on the knee pressing just gently if you like to get a little more twist or not, just gently moving as much as your body wants to. 
Keep the head reaching up, the spine stretching apart. With the exhalations, just keep deepening that twist as much or as little as your body likes. And when you're ready to release, hand comes back to shoulder level. Just follow it around to the center and release your hands. Notice all that spine energy from the twist. And of course, switch your legs around so we can balance and twist to the opposite side. So sitting on slightly behind you, take your hand to that opposite knee, other arm out at shoulder width. Keep those shoulder blades towards your waist, ground reaching up, spine opening. Exhale, follow your hand around into the chest. As it gets as far back as it wants to go, put the hand near your body on the floor and lift your heart and spine up through the crown. Exhale, deepen. So again, as you turn, make sure you're not planting both sitting bones, but you're allowing your whole body, hips, ribs, and shoulder to turn into the twist. Take a breath. Exhale and deepen as far as you would like to go. Just allow your twist, don't force it. And to release, hand comes back up to shoulder level. Following it around, nothing jerky as you come back to the center. <coughs> and then take your feet to the end of the mat, sitting bones behind you, activate your core, and just slowly roll away to the left. Take a moment, just let your shoulders release, hands, palms up at your sides. Move back and forth, letting everything release and relax into that surface beneath you, getting ready for our final relaxation. So deep breath in, exhale, and let everything sink. So just allow your body to soften, let the earth support you without any awareness of what's going on anywhere in your body. Move your shoulders around, let them come down toward the floor, feeling that heart maybe expand across your chest a little bit more. Angle your toes toward each other, and then just let your legs relax. Feel that hip area release, and the whole legs just get heavier, sinking deeper into that earth band connection. Move your head side to side, allow your neck to release and relax as well. Just letting everything soften and sink, supported by the earth beneath you. And just let your body continue growing heavier as you relax, exhaling any tension, deepening the support, letting everything go. And as you breathe more deeply, just exhale and let everything soften even further. Breathing deep, letting your mind release thoughts of your body. And as those thoughts release, know that other thoughts will come to you. It's always the job of your mind to keep producing thoughts. It's your choice whether you pay attention. So just let those thoughts drift in and out as easily as your breath. No need to remember the past, no need to anticipate the future. Just let the thoughts flow without attention. No need for awareness to the content of any thought. Just let it go, drifting away without attention. Just let your awareness release both your body and your mind. With that awareness, focus inward, finding the peace deep within. Feel your body, feel your mind, and just be peace.
If you have time to keep relaxing, do as long as you have opportunity. But if it's time to get ready for the rest of your day, you begin drawing energy and awareness with the breath back to the moment, to the room, to your body. And as you begin breathing more deeply, just begin moving your body gently, however it feels right for you today. Breathing more fully, stretching more completely whenever you're ready to do so. And of course, when you're ready for your final yoga hug of appreciation, sitting bones toward your heels, heels coming toward your hips, and knees up toward your heart. Wrap your arms around, give yourself that appreciative yoga hug, let your body know you appreciate its yoga work and the work your body does for you every day. And when you're ready to release, bring your head and feet to the floor, the roll to the side, and sit back up, getting ready for whatever's ahead for you today. Thanks for joining me.